Good afternoon, I'm Claudia Panciroli, Neuro-Oncology Clinical Trials Coordinator at the Catalan Institute of Oncology in Badalona, Barcelona. And it's a pleasure for me to present this session entitled Organizational and Ethical Issues in the context of the webinar New Approaches to Clinical Trials in Neuro-Oncology. I have no disclosure to declare. Here are reported uh, some of the hardest challenges the investigation team has to face with when participating in a clinical trial. First of all, let's have a general look to them just to have an idea of what they are, and subsequently I will explain some important aspects into detail. First of all, the time needed and the financial demands of clinical investigation. For example, the protective time from protocol approval to the trial activation. Then the overall shortage of specialists with narrow incentives. Then the increasing complexity and high number of regulation and contracts. The lack of local supportive infrastructure. The huge clinical research workforce, for example, the case I report form. The interaction with industry and issues with technology transfer. And the, difficult, uh, the difficulty of recruitment and rotation of patients. So let's see in, um, in uh, details the, the organizational issues concerning some of the most important aspects of the clinical research. Let's start with the, with the issues uh, concerning the, the professionals involved in the clinical trials. Um, a clinical trials need time, patient and precision. I wrote uh, these uh, three words many times just uh, to remark how they are important when opening a clinical trial. So a clinical trial requires uh, more visits to perform and procedures to assess, uh, documentation and electronic uh, theory half to be constantly checked and uh, signed, training to perform, serious adverse events to report, meeting to attend, support patients, availability from monitoring uh, visits, communication among the professionals involved, uh, for example, study coordinator, data manager, uh, principal investigation and uh, sub-investigators, um, study nurse, pharmacies and monitors. Uh, just remember that a mistake requires more time than making things right from the beginning. Um, another important aspect to be discussed is the documentation stored at site. So just remember that before site activation, we need the ethical committee approval, the financial aspect to be discussed and approved, the insurance certificate avail available, and the signed contract. Just remember to be precise and take time to make things right from the beginning. This is always the same phrase we should take into consideration. Uh, what are the frequent mistake, mistakes that are missing regarding the documentations? Uh, for example, let's start with the missing dates and signature. Um, for, for example, it's impossible to establish when a procedure was performed if it's not reported in a correct way. Uh, the language comprehension and the abbreviation used that all sometimes can, uh, um, can be uh, in doubt. The procedure is performed before the informed consent form signature. The procedures which are out of window or not done. Uh, a brief medical history with the missing information which can be, which can be useful. Um, the correction recorded a month after the mistakes occurred. The so-called copy and paste information which are always the same uh, at, any visit, at, at all the visits. The last documentation with no copies available, the procedures and the reports not assigned by the principal investigator or the same investigator, and confusion in the past medical history, for example, when we have unclear information. And once again, be precise and, to and take time to make things right from the beginning in order to avoid uh, these uh, mistakes and uh, missing. And finally, when storing uh, a trial at site, uh, please be careful to, to obsolete versions, 
to blind study in on uh, um, uh, to 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 blind uh, studies in an accessible place for blind team, which should be stored there, and uh, destroy certificate and materials that be, must be recorded must be recorded at site. Uh, always use, we always take into, the, into consideration the good clinical practice when, uh, uh, when doing your work. Um, you have to answer your queries in a precise and opportune manner in order to avoid further queries. Use an adequate terminology. Read carefully what is the information required. And once again, be precise and take time to make things right from the beginning. Okay, uh, concerning the serious uh, adverse events um, report, remember that uh, an hospitalization normally is required for um, an adverse event equal or major than grade three. Then remember to note down the relationship with the study treatment, with the study treatment, which one it was interrupted when. Uh, remember to note down the medication to treat the sign. For example, levetiracetam, uh, one, um, uh, 1,000 milligrams every 12 hours, for example, tablet from this date to this date, due to, for example, seizure grade uh, two related to brain tumors, because sometimes this, is for, this information is not clear or it's uh, uh, just a part, uh, is, it's just a part, for example, there's all just the dose and the other information is missing. Then note out the concomitant medication used. If there are other other eyes, other adverse events, a part of the, the sign. Uh, just to, um, you have to avoid to put uh, two grades for the same adverse event. An adverse event or a serious adverse event is, for example, a grade three or four. It can be grade three, four. Just choose one. And just remember to use the CTC high, the, the latest version. For example, the latest version is right now the version number five. And just see if uh, uh, the adverse event uh, has got the kind of grade you would like to, to give. For example, a prosync of grade one does not exist in the, the CTCA, so just have a look and choose the correct grade. Uh, concerning the monitorization um, visits, remember that uh, uh, time is not enough, so continuous communication is important between promoter and site. Uh, the training that must be performed for new pro uh, procedures and updates. You have to verify uh, source and documents and tools. So together with the monitor, we have to organize the informed consent form, the medical history, the reports, medication, and other certificates. And everything must be available and updated. Okay, uh, when an audit is performed, all the staff must be, must be, must offer uh, their uh, availability uh, from the beginning, from the, uh, above all, from the beginning uh, and uh, on, the last day, on the last day. So the auditors have to, uh, have to meet with all the staff from the sub investigator to the study coordinator, uh, study nurse, pharmacist, and so on. All the documentation uh, must be available and updated. This is to say uh, the calibration and accreditations, the laboratory range and certificates, the quality certificates, the temperature certificates, the medication accountability, the um, curriculum vitae, the good clinical practice and yetta of uh, all the staff, site signature, delegation and training logs, uh, source documents, medical history, diagnostic, diagnostic tests, the complementary procedures, treatment administration, the informed consent form, the CRF must be updated, and the documentation must be signed. 
Uh, now let's explore some of the specific issues of the neurooncology, the quality of life, the performance status, and the, uh, the neurocognition. Uh, concerning the, the quality of life, the most important issues are the following. For example, the difficulty in filling the uh, QLQ, the, the quality of life questionnaire, for example, due to amyanopsia, amyparesis, and so on. Then the answers provided in the QLQ sometimes do not reflect the ones given during the interview with the medical doctor. Another issue could be some uh, question of the QLQ that are not sensitive enough for brain tumor patient. The questionnaire is too long to be completed. Uh, the help needed uh, in case of neurocognitive and neurological impairments. The, or another, another issue that the caregiver does, do, does not have a clear perception of the patient quality of life. If we need, for example, the need, uh, the help of the caregiver to, to fill the, the questionnaire. And the brain tumor patient uh, quality of life is not only physical and psychological, but, but also neurocognitive. And that is an important aspect uh, to be considered. Then concerning the performance status, the, the most important issues are the differences among the caregiver, the patient and the medical doctor concerning the patient's uh, performance status, because um, sometimes uh, uh, the caregiver could have a different, uh, a different idea or um, uh, the, a different idea from, for example, the, the patient one. So each, so each one have a different perception of the, of the performance status of the patient. Uh, the performance status uh, of brain tumor patient should uh, consider also the neurological and the cognitive domains. And not, so, and not only the, the physical one. For example, there, there, could, there could be differences between the kind of job the patient realizes. It's different, the performance status of a, a patient, for example, which is a, a teacher or a medical doctor, for example, than a other profession which uh, requires a more physical aspect instead of uh, in, instead of, uh, for example, cognitive ones. And uh, the last issues could be the limitation to accrual to, to studies. Concerning the neurocognitions, uh, the most important issues could be the difficulties in being explored uh, throughout the neuropsychological battery because it's not so simple. It depends on the patient you have to test. Uh, some tests are not sensitive enough to detect real or apparent impairments. Educational levels, uh, educational level is involved when realizing a neurocognitive test. However, the previous educational level before the brain tumor is unknown and can be considered. Uh, then the neurological impairments, for example, speech with uh, visual, visual disorders that could uh, affect the test results. And, uh, and the neurocognition could lead to difficulty in understanding the informal concept form. Okay, other specific issues of the neurooncology uh, are the imaging assessment, the tumorous tissues, and the procedures that uh, must be performed at different time points. Let's start with the imaging assessment. The major issues are the difficulty in response assessment, for example, distinguish and progression versus a pseudo progression. Then the specific techniques required for uh, central nervous system uh, MRI, for example, the use of DTI, the PWUI, the specific measures uh, needed for uh, the MRI, for example, the double con, the use of a double contrast which could be required in a clinical trial. Then, then the time and training to upload the MRI images. Then the differences uh, before, uh, be between perform an MRI and a CT scan because an MRI is, is required for brain tumor patient and the CT scan, um, it's not the best way to, to, to assess the, the tumor. 
However, if we if the patient have a pacemaker or the brain stimulator metallic implants, we can't realize an MRI. The and and and, and, and in this case, it's not. Uh, it, it could be that the patient could could not be enrolled in a clinical trial. Then the PET scan usefulness, uh, baseline versus progression, uh, in the sense that if the patient progressed, we can perform a PET scan. However, we we should need a baseline to be more a baseline PET scan to be more precise. Uh, in a clinical trial, uh, the imaging assessment uh, um, it's possible that it could be needed every six or eight weeks. Uh, then for the patient, the feeling uncomfortable during an MRI, for example, for the cold, for the noise. The random criteria, uh, different variables uh, needed, for example, imaging assessment, the performance status, the use of steroids, the, the neurological status, and so on. And the last, the comparison between follow-up assessment and baseline. For example, no changes observed compared to the previous MRI, but with the baseline one. So we have to take into consideration different uh, aspects. Then uh, the tumor tissue. Uh, it's important that the availability of tissue for translational research, uh, the time required to have the tissue back to site where the patient progresses, for example, for a neurogen need to start a further line treatment as a uh, poor malignant material collected, the time required for shipment, and possible custom issues. These are the issues that uh, a clinical trials um, that the, the, the tumor that that the important of the tumor tissues of a of a clinical uh, of the um, for the for a clinical trial. And the last one, the procedures at, uh, that, is, that should be performed at different time points. Uh, the, um, the most important problem is the, the time contrast in the aggressive tumor for screening because the time uh, sample are, um, or, or the blood testing must be taken and um, and uh, sent to the central lab to determine, for example, the inclusion. Uh, and, uh, and this, pro uh, this process needs and it's time to, to be done. Uh, and not only at the screening, but uh, uh, also the, the biomarker, for example, the, the biomarker testing, uh, which uh, requires specific materials and tools uh, that are not collected only at screening, but also during treatment and out of treatment, for example, for uh, phase one uh, trials. Uh, another important aspect that should be analyzed is the risk on drug-to-drug uh, -drug interactions. Uh, we must pay attention to the um, use of steroids, for example, when using uh, an immunotherapy, because steroids uh, mitigate the impact of immunotherapy. And uh, in, in a clinical trial, uh, for example, at screening, we, sm we must be able to taper steroids, or preferably uh, discontinue, within four, uh, 14 days before enrollment. Uh, those that are randomization normally must be uh, with uh, a dose inferior or uh, manner of uh, 20 milligrams of pregnisone daily or 3 milligrams dexamethasone daily. Uh, and concerning the, um, the anti-epileptic drug, uh, that, could, uh, that could be some possible interactions uh, with the uh, valproic acid. And concerning the, the tyrosine uh, kinase inhibitors, uh, just remember that the, the anti-epileptic drugs cause up to four-fold faster clearance with the tyrosine kinase inhibitors, uh, for example, the crisotinib, dasatinib, amatinib, and uh, lapatinib. The use of uh, imatinib and crisotinib may lead to enzyme inhibition of uh, concurrent uh, therapy. And many of the newer uh, generation of uh, anti-epileptic drugs that, uh, do not induce or inhibit the drug metabolism, 
but they can other enzyme activity by other drugs, including uh, anti-epileptic drugs, chemotherapeutics, and uh, tyrosine kinase inhibitors. Uh, now let's move to the ethical issues, which can be methodological, uh, such as the clinical uh, relevance and the believable and the effective results of the trial. We have to, to, to start in a side. And as well, uh, uh, bioethical, for example, the relationship between risk and hypothetical benefits, above all in uh, phase one trials, it's important the, the investigation group skills, the assurance and social economic repercussions, and, the, and to respect and protect patients. And so the importance of the informal consent uh, form, because before signing it, we have uh, we need time to explain, time to read, time to think, time to solve doubts, time to verbalize. For example, uh, if we have uh, um, if the, if the patients are vulnerable subjects, uh, for example, uh, due to the disease of children or elderly patients, uh, some handicaps. So the informed consent must be clear, simple, correct, complete, precise, understandable, confidential, truthful, and uh, right. Always take into consideration the adverse event, the serial adverse event. That uh, must be clearly explained in the medical, uh, in the clinical medical history. Um, pay attention to the protocol deviation, deviation to the changes in procedures. For example, uh, if there are some amendments, new amendments, they use the storing of data, goods, and samples. The safety and the respect of patient above all. Concerning the umbrella and basket clinical trial issues, uh, let's uh, consider the, um, the scientific valid valid validity. Uh, patients with uh, rare malignancies have the opportunity to benefit from the trial, but due to the uh, to insufficient accrual, the trial may, generated, uh, may generate clinical insignificant appendix. And uh, the another issues uh, that uh, this kind of clinical trials can potentially arm a patient and assign them to an inappropriate therapy arm. Concerning the benefit and risk, uh, novel clinical trials offer limited uh, direct benefits to patients, and all potential participants must wait about two weeks for the result of the genetic screening. The informed consent form, the sensitive use uh, of phrases like personalized medicine, tailored therapy, or precision oncology might cause conviction that the study protocol is designed to fulfill the individual as related the needs of particip participants. And the difficulty, the, the difficulty to understand the informed consent form from brain tumors patients possibly related to neurological and uh, cognitive disturbance. And then, uh, uh, at least, uh, um, this kind of clinical trials require a larger size, particularly in a randomized subtrials, longer duration, difficulty in rolling rare molecular subtypes of a single tumor type, the susceptibility to changes uh, in the treatment landscape during the trial, and the high cost of managing and executing the trial. And then concerning the, the phase zero clinical trial issues, first of all, let's consider the experiments in patients with uh, terminal cancer that might not offer the possibility of direct therapeutic benefit, but have an impact on the further development of the agent. Uh, even with low doses and limited dosing schedules, the risks are not, in a, not ineligible and include those associated with the biopsy procedures. And participation in a phase zero trial should not exclude patients from participating in a subsequent uh, later stage of trial of uh, that agent or to other clinical trials that uh, offer, for example, the possibility of direct benefits uh, uh, for example, in uh, phase one uh, uh, trials. 
Uh, I would like to thank uh, Evangelia for uh, her kind help and uh, availability. And uh, thank you all for uh, your attention. If you would like to contact me, please uh, note down my email address and uh, have a nice afternoon.